Uh, can I have a suggestion? How do you read? Yeah, yeah we're in the editor. Uh, can I have a suggestion? Over. Well, how are you getting from? Here in the control center, we're hearing the uh, crew aboard the spacecraft, Apollo 17. NASA, Houston, Texas. Fabled base of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Our entire space program is controlled from here. Recently, its sophisticated facilities, equipment, and systems for the development and testing of spacecraft were opened to a major motion picture company, making an unusual film called Future World. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to... The company is not using the advanced technology to make a film about space travel. Guided by co-producer James Aubrey, they are creating a science fiction resort where people can live out their fantasies. When we came down here and surveyed NASA and saw the unbelievable background and locations which were available, uh, we then went back and rewrote the script so that we could take advantage of these locations and backgrounds because there was no way they could possibly be duplicated anywhere in the world. This is NASA's Space Environment Testing Laboratory, just one of director Dick Heffern's sets for the filming. These uh, interiors, the, the actual hardware uh, is enormous, complicated, uh, <laughs> incredibly expensive, and uh, I can't think of any way under the sun that a, a motion picture company could afford to uh, build all this on a soundstage. Before he filmed, Heffern rehearses the stars of his movie. Peter Fonda, Blythe Danner, and Arthur Hill. They'll be working in front of an inner space chamber, a setting the special effects designer created within the space laboratory. We are recording sound, and we will hear you if you talk. The idea is to actually make a videotape of a dream. Take it with you, play it back, find out what you're thinking about. That is absolutely amazing. You like to try it? Yeah, go on, go for it, Doc. <laughs> Yes, yes, I think I would. You know, maybe I could use it on the program. I think you'll find it's a unique experience. Doc, can you just wait here? You bet. I want to see this. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean he can watch? Don't you worry. I won't tell anybody. All right, wise guy. It's about time you learned something about women. <laughs> this way. Think, Margaret. Every thought, like every eye blink or heartbeat, releases cars of electricity, which could be transformed into waves. Well, she's got a lot on her mind, huh? Well, we're recording 2,000 different waves from 5,000 separate brain locations. Wow. Millions of bits of information. You take it all in and put it back together. Today we're shooting a scene in which I enter a chamber, and in this they are able to record to videotape dreams when you enter this chamber. You go to sleep, so miraculously, you fall asleep. And you're able to have a copy of your dream to take home with you after you've come out of this chamber. Yul Brynner was quite a treat to meet. He's uh, quite an elegant man. It was quite a lot of fun to work with. Well, my uh, name is Brent Salstrom, and I'm uh, coordinating the visual effects. One of these major thrusts is that computers are, in fact, creating the clones through developing uh, psychological and biological databases on the guests and using this database starting to work basically down at the DNA level and really creating a real new person in every aspect and every detail. As a set, the company used NASA's Life Systems Laboratory. Co-producer Paul Lazarus describes another location. In today's location work, we're using actual modules that are simulated versions of those that actually went up in space. Uh, in the continuity of our story, these are simulated modules for the entertainment of the guests uh, in which they can go in and go through all of the mechanics and thrills that lay before the astronauts when they first went up in space. Uh, here again, we're in an area in which no amount of money in Hollywood terms could create these kinds of sets. It's supposed to be the rocket blast with the shape, you know? Okay, please hold it very quiet down there. Roll. Turning straight. All right. And action. Three, two, one. Blast. Back. Print it. Print two. Okay. Put the robot back in the box. She's through for today. 
The anechoic chamber test building is a specialized facility where foam-covered walls, floor and ceiling soak up any stray signals during spacecraft communication tests. The director comments on its uniqueness. I think that's what's really exciting about working here is that there are things going on here that people just normally never see. And it's fun to see it in a fictional adventure story context. What they have at NASA is, for me, irreplaceable and priceless. Uh, action, you will have cleared out of here. I don't know where you're going, but you will go somewhere, right? Now, you just, you know, that's a part we'll get on this job. Getting in, landing, whatever. Hey, you know, you ought to try it with these on, boss. It's great. Uh, okay, just as far as we get it, we sit down. And do I sit down and do the <coughs> thing. It's very straight, because it's just purely, you know, uh, robot. That's robot. right. Very straight ahead, absolutely straight ahead. Absolutely. No, no expression or nothing, you know? Working only at night, the company is given permission to turn the anechoic chamber into a set called the cloning room. Blythe Danner talks about playing a robot. We have clones, which are robots that are replicas in every way of ourselves. But in actuality, they are reverses on ourselves. I mean, for the close-up of the clone, it's a close-up on ourselves. But you have a different attitude. It's a whole different um, way of thinking and playing somebody. Every detail of this fantasy is not possible. But the idea of the fantasy, the central notion of uh, robots, servo mechanisms who can be made to look like people, the idea of cloning people, the idea of a dream chamber where your brain waves are actually monitored and turned into images, all these are based on solid scientific possibilities right now. And uh, a lot of them could uh, occur within the next 10 or 15 years. For an extension of the idea of Westworld, Dick Heffron and the movie company are using the Lyndon B. Johnson Space Center in Houston as the framework of the new motion picture, Future World. They are working in the one place in the world where science, fact, and fiction can be combined with unbelievable scope and dimension. They are filming at NASA. Well, Commander Houston, now uh, we've lost TV. We're going to get a little bit of data here before we go over the hill. Understand, I'll say them again. We would like the three TV power switches on panel 181 turned off. 